What's up guys, welcome back again to Real Madrid Hub. We have more news to talk about. In the first video, I've been talking about Erling Haaland because right after I upload the first video regarding to the Norwegian player, more news came up and of course, I'm going to summarize and recap a little bit the information that Giuseppe Rol delivered the last night in Outsetting Ito. I don't know if y'all had the chance to watch the show, but he said something regarding to the player. I mean, not everything, but he hinted that something is going to happen next week. But before they get started with that in Holland, let me tell you something really important and sad. Luka Modric will miss two to three games. Two to the three games. The first time we learned Luka Modric was injured, we thought it was going to be just one game. That's it, right? Well, let me tell you something. Right after that, now it's two to the three games. This is always, I mean, it's the same old, man. It's the same old. Every single time we have an international break, every single time we get a player injured. Don't ask me why, don't ask me the reason for it, but man, we are not lucky at all. And especially Luka Modric is the second, the third time he gets injured during the international break. And on top of that, let me tell you something else. Every time we think it's going to be about one week, one game, or three days, it turns out always two to the three weeks, two to the three games, or two to the three months, okay? So the injuries are worse than expected in the first sight, in the first time, in the first stage. Every time they tell you, yeah, no, it's a, yeah, he, he get, I mean, he got injured, but it's not a big deal. And then, in turn, it turns out it is big deal. I mean, it is big deal. To miss Luka Modric for two to three games, it's big deal. If you cannot count with one of the most important players in the midfield of Real Madrid, it is big deal. You know what I'm saying? So, man, I'm a little bit sick and tired of this situation. And apparently, nobody will do anything about that. I mean, we have to stop the international breaks or limit, try to limit the games the players can play in this kind of international breaks because the um, the only one losing stuff here, the only one that is losing all the time is the club. So Real Madrid is the only one harmed by this decision of the players to go and play with the national team, which is fine to me, right? I really understand why they do that, but man, you know, season in a season where you have to play a bunch of games i mean whether the club and um, national team and then we have the world cup and all the stuff then we have the nations league and then we have the international breaks and the friendly games and stuff like that you're constantly player okay and exhausting yourself and that is not good for the club it is actually really bad but apparently nobody cares about that so that is what makes me really nuts okay so more stuff regarding to Hendrik because I know that some of y'all want to know anything else about Hendrik the Brazilian player and the possibility for him to sign for Real Madrid let me tell you something really quick yesterday the president of Palmeiras she said something really important like nobody has reached out to me to ask me for Hendrik and that is referring to the rumors that are setting up to Hendrik in Real Madrid or the rumors speculating with the possibility for Real Madrid to sign Hendrik. Let me tell you something. The fact we are interested in Hendrik doesn't mean we already have reached out to this president, to the club or whoever it is. We are just tracking and monitoring uh, the Hendrik Carrilla. That's it. I mean, you can reach out to the father. You can reach out to the agent. You can reach out to uh, people around the player, right? But not to the club that has the rights of the player, right? You don't have to reach out to Palmeiras. You don't have to reach out to any other club to ask for a player if you are interested in the player. The first thing you do is to reach out the player, I mean, whether the player directly or the agent or the father or whoever it is, and we have the right person 
for this kind of situations. That person is Juni Calafat, our own scouter, and he really knows and very good the Brazilian market. He knows every single player, right? So every time we're interested in a player, we send the Unical Fund over Brazil to ask anybody, to find anybody, to figure out how to reach out the player and ask him and uh, follow him and let him know that we are interested in him. But before any official, before any formal contact happen, we are um, you know, testing the waters first. We cannot go ahead all in 100% straight through the club and asking for the player because what is going to happen is the club will raise his price and the price is going to get crazy and we are going to have to rule out the possibility of the signing, right? So that is how Ramadi works in, the, in this kind of situations, right? It is not like 100% straight, straight through the club asking for the player. No, we don't reach out to the player. We reach out to the people around the player, okay? And that is a very weird, I mean, a very way, a very different way. So we reach out to the agent, father, mother, whoever it is, but not the club, okay? So to me, Ramadit is really interested in Hendrik, but we haven't requested, we haven't made the call yet to the club because it is not the time, it is not the moment. And of course, it'll take a time, okay, to reach out the club to ask about Hendrik. So that, something like that is not gonna happen anytime soon. Okay, let me give you an update on Al Khalaif because as you know, yesterday I was talking about the big problem. He's getting in big trouble with the justice in France and also in Qatar. Apparently an empresario, I mean um, a person, a business person from Qatar was put in jail under his own orders, right? Under the order of Al Khalaif. So that is a very, very dark um, issue that he has right now and apparently he might face jail if somebody can prove that he was the person responsible to put this person in jail okay that was number one number two he was according to um, Le Parisien three people have been arrested uh, and um, I mean under allegations of uh, money laundry in favor of Paris Saint-Germain in al Khalifi. and the third person it was the person um, who is being interrogated by the person put in jail in Qatar so right now he has two big problems the person in Qatar in jail and the three guys arrested in France one came up from Liberation the newspaper in France and the other one from Le Parisien so he has to be really careful, extremely careful, if he wants to stay safe, because that would be, I mean, that would be really harmful for the image of PSG and for himself. So something can happen, and of course, um, I don't know, PSG might blow out, man, because they have a lot of problems, and the next problem I'm gonna talk about in PSG is the war between Neymar and Kylian Mbappe because the war is not over yet. Let me tell you something. Kylian Mbappe and Neymar, according to L'Equipe, are still on war, but they have made a kind of truce so um, they can get their own goals and collective goals and do not harm to anybody else for their own wars. But apparently, their relationship is not, is not becoming better at all. It is not becoming better at all. They are still thinking, thinking trash about each other. They don't like each other. They are not getting along each other anymore. And they are having some issues between each other and PSG. So the way to solve this, the way they can get through this and overcome this kind of situation, I don't know what it is, man, but if Neymar is straight 100% determined to be the best one in PSG and shadow to um, Kylian Mbappe, that can happen because Neymar is, I'm not going to say he's better than Kylian Mbappe, but he's a very talented player and he's one of the best players in the world. If he wants to uh, press the pedal to the metal, I mean, there will be a kind of conflict, there will be a kind of, you know, thing, a big thing in PSG with Kylian Mbappe and Neymar. We will have to wait though because of course they're smart enough to keep all these things 
down and low key and stuff like that and do not say anything really you know um harmful or something like that but these kind of rumors will come out of public i mean i'm pretty sure of that because um sooner or later somebody is going to learn these guys are not getting along anymore and of course all the problems will come up at some point and we will learn about that i don't know how are they going to manage all this stuff but of course it's not good for psg at all so let's see what happens we will have to wait a little bit and see what happens guys i see you tomorrow